Hey, happy Friday, sailors. Let's take a look at voice. Today, um, at the end of the day, you're going to get into your assignment um, where we're really going to practice and have some fun with voice. So let's kick it off with 10 minutes of independent reading. And I'd like you to spend that time really looking for a great example of figurative language in your independent reading book. And be ready to share that with another person in your crew. Go ahead and read. All right, now that you've had a chance to find some figurative language in your books, let's see how you do with a little quizzes. So inside Google Classroom, underneath your posting for voice, go ahead and click on quizzes. Go ahead and play that for a few minutes and see how do you do when it comes to figurative language. All right, welcome back. I hope you had some fun and kind of refreshing your brain on figurative language. I'm gonna ask you guys to go ahead and go into Google Classroom and open up your writer's notebook. So find that writer's notebook and you'll um, open it up. You'll see where we're at with voice. And then you can just go ahead and date it for today right up here at the top. And we're gonna do a little work here in our writer's notebook. So go ahead and find that and then start it back up. All right, today's the 13th, and so we'll go ahead and put 11, 13, 20 on there. Oh my gosh, it's Friday the 13th. Didn't even think of that. So let's do a little practice here with voice. So right now, you're going to pick a side, and then you're going to do a quick write. A quick write means we're going to give you about five minutes to do this writing piece. So take a look right here at this writing piece. All right, so looking right here. you're going to choose you're going to choose to either be johnny rotten or petunia and you're going to become that character and write from their point of view so here's the scenario johnny rotten and his punk friends have been waking up petunia and her cat mr jinxy up from their afternoon nap with all their ruckus that they're raising at the skate park you're going to write their voices. So if you're going to pretend to be Johnny Rotten, you're going to be hanging out with your buddies at the skate park, doing your very best to irritate good old Petunia and Mr. Jinxie. If you're going to pretend to be Petunia, you're going to be writing from your point of view and how much you hate those punk kids over at that skate park and how they disturb you and your little friend, Mr. Jinxie, every day. So your job is to choose a side. You either get to be Johnny Rotten or you get to be Petunia. Spend about five minutes writing from your point of view right here. So you go ahead and choose if you want to be Johnny Rotten and then write your little story from Johnny Rotten's point of view. If you're going to choose to be Petunia, you'll put Petunia right here and write your story from Petunia's little point of view. When you're all done, um, take a few minutes and share out a few responses inside your crew. So teachers, give them about five minutes to write and then call on just a few students to share out. Have fun and let their voices shine through. Okay, hopefully you've had some fun sharing some of those. Maybe Johnny Rotten said something like, guys, get over here. Let's turn up the volume on the speaker and drive that old bat crazy. I just love ticking off that old bat. She gets so bent over the dumbest things. The best is when she opens the door and stands there staring at us with her fat cat in her arms. What does she think staring at us will really do? And then you, Or you could have been Petunia. Oh, Mr. Jinxie, I'm so sorry that those rotten kids have prevented us from napping. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. I'm so sick of those kids. I'm going to open the door and give them the look. They will be ashamed of themselves after they see the look. So hopefully you had a little fun playing back and forth with these two characters and, um, and really getting into voice because that's what makes writing and reading so much fun is voice. All right, we're going to do a little fun practice here. So down below from where you've written, trying to get mine to enter here, down below from where you've written, 
we're going to watch a little video clip. And what I want you to do is try and tell me what is the figurative language inside this video clip. So for each one, you can just, you know, jot down. If you want to put an S for simile, you can. If you want to put a P for personification, an O for onomatopoeia. But for each one, just go ahead and jot down what you think it is, and then you'll be able to see if you're right. So let's test some of your knowledge on figurative language before we get into your writing piece that's going to require you to use figurative language. All right, let's take a look. So for each song, write down on um, in your writer's notebook what type of figurative language you think is being used here. So write down what do you think it it was. So what um, figurative language piece was that? Was it a simile? Was it an onomatopoeia? Was it personification? Was it a metaphor, or exaggeration, hyperbole? So what do you think it was? And now let's see. All right, so number one was an exaggeration. And number two here, right here, the stars will cry. Um, obviously, that's personification. Let's see how you do as we keep going. Can we pretend that airplanes in the night sky are like shooting stars? I can really use a wish right now, wish right now, wish right now. Can we pretend that airplanes in the night sky are like shooting stars? I can really use a wish right now, wish right now. All right, what do you think that one is? Here's a hint right here. It's a simile. All right, let's keep going. So if you're looking at this one, this one also had a big hint right here. It's a simile. All right, let's keep going. Number five. Remember, you should be writing this down inside your writer's notebook. Right here, you were a thief, and I, your willing victim. What do you think? If you said metaphor, you are correct. Let's do one more, number six. All 
All right, what do you think when you're looking in here, catch a grenade, um, jump in front of a train? If you said an exaggeration or a hyperbole, you are correct. All right, so now we've had lots of figurative language practice, it's time to talk about our assignment. Okay, before I get into our assignment, I have a bit of bad news. We've lost said. It's officially dead. Please keep that in mind today and for the rest of the school year as you're writing. Said is dead. Said has died. And in said's place are so many better fireball words. And you're going to see them. You're going to try and avoid said because why? He's dead. And so you want to use better words instead of said when you're writing. You need to use lots and lots of fireballs. So keep that in mind because it's going to be a requirement to keep said out of your writing as much as possible. All right, let's get into our assignment. Go to Google Classroom. Once you get into Google Classroom, open up the assignment called Keep It On The Down Low. Go ahead and pause and get it there. Okay, here you are. Keep it on the down low. This is your assignment. And today, Friday the 13th, let's get after it. This is where you're going to be composing your writing piece. Down below is the assignment. So scroll down to page two. I'm going to go over this and then you're going to pick which one you want to write about. So here's your assignment. You're going to be creating a dramatic dialogue between two people in order to practice using quotation marks and integrating voice into your writing. This is a creative, fun write. Take a look. You have six choices right here. You've got to pick one of them to decide that you're going to write about it. So let's look at the choices, and then I want you to highlight the one you want to write about. All right, take a look. You could choose to do scenario number one. You're a CIA agent who's tapped into the phone line of a dangerous mafia family. You're going to write down the secret conversation that you hear. You know, hey, Papa Mario. You got the goods. Yo, Vinny, keep it on the down low. So you want to make sure, what's that What's that going to sound like? All right, number two, you're an extremely curious brother or sister who's quietly listening on the phone to your sibling getting dumped. You're going to write down that dramatic conversation that you hear. So maybe they come in and, and they've got their phone on speaker and they don't know you're in the room and you, you hear them getting dumped. All right, number three. Your restaurant, and um, it sounds like the guy behind you, he's getting ready to propose to his girlfriend. And you can write down the conversation that you hear. And so he might be, oh, I just love you so much. Will you be with me for the rest of my life? And she might be like, nope, I'm out. So you can have it be as fun as you want it to be. All right, number four, you could choose to be the custodian pushing your cart around the middle school and you're cleaning the offices and you hear the principal expelling Johnny Rotten, expelling a kid who's been up to no good. So you're going to write that conversation down. You could do number five, which is a professional sports agent who's tapped into the phone line of the top draft pick. And you're listening as another team is recruiting him or her. Uh, write down those negotiations. Or number six, you can make your own. Come up with your own two characters. Create your own situation. But they're going to have to have some type of conversation going on. So right now, Choose one, two, three, four, five, and, or six. Which one are you going to do? Highlight the one you want to do. All right, now that you've picked which one you want to do, you've highlighted it, you know what you're going to do, you're going to keep in mind these requirements, okay? So there's a rubric down here that goes over everything you need to have. So, and there's also this checklist right here. You're going to have to have at least two examples of figurative language while you're writing. You're also going to have to have tagging, which I'm going to teach you on Monday. So don't worry about tagging today. You're going to need to use at least three fireball verbs for said. And for that, there's a great document on Google Classroom for you that you can just open right up. And it looks like this. It says said is dead. And you can see it right here. Some better word choices to use instead of said, answered, explained, roared, cried, stuttered, whispered, hmm, pondered, bellowed, gushed. So you want to come up with better word choice than said because, hmm, RIP, 
set is dead. All right, so make sure that you're using those. Now, I want to encourage you when you're writing, you do your writing up here. So when you're doing your writing, you've got to come up with a few things here. The first thing, you can't just jump right into your conversation. You're going to have to have some type of intro, some type of lead into it. So taking a look, lots of punctuation and indenting. You'll need a title and you need to have at least 10 exchanges of dialogue. Each character needs to talk at least five times. So character one speaks, character two, character three, or character one, character two. And it goes back and forth until you get to 10. So make sure there's 10 exchanges of dialogue going on. I'm going to show you some examples of what that would look like. All right. So right now, let's take a look at this example. All right. This example is called Flush It. And they decided to do, this is a student writing piece. They decided to do theirs um, being the custodian, hearing the kids get suspended. So take a look. This very first paragraph is a little intro. It leads us into the actual story. And then there's the dialogue where people go back and forth chatting with one another. All right, take a look. Only one clogged toilet. The lunchroom wasn't as bad as normal days and nobody had thrown up in class. It's been a good day, I thought aloud. It was after school hours and all the students and staff had fled home. I moseyed down the hall with my cleaning cart to start cleaning the classrooms and the offices. As I walked into the office, I heard two voices coming from Mr. McDonald's office. Mr. McDonald, the principal of Pinewood Middle School, was a strict but fair man. He was like a prison guard, though. He, he kept a close eye on every student at Pinewood Middle School. As I started to clean, I could hear the discussion Mr. McDonald was having with Joey, the biggest bully in our school. Joey, what you did was unacceptable. We do not tolerate that kind of behavior here at Pinewood Middle School, Mr. McDonald shouted, staring right at Joey. I know you don't, but I don't really care what you say. All I did was stick a little punk sixth grader's head in the toilet and flush it. His hair needed a good rinsing, smirked Joey. Joey, this has been your third time this year getting into some major trouble. So I've contacted your mom and I've talked to her. and We've come up with a good punishment for you. This time your punishment is more than a couple detentions. The school and I have decided to expel you. Your mom is going to be speaking to you about the new military boarding school for troubled teens where you will finish your middle school education. What? You can't do that. I'm going to tell my lawyer and sue you for doing this, screamed Joey, slamming the table with his fist. Joey, bullying is not tolerated at the school, and I can't have any. Just stop talking to me. I really don't give a crap about anything that you say yelled Joey, standing up and shoving his chair. Joey, settle down. We need to talk and sit down and talk about this. What you did is very serious. Nope, I'm not going to settle down. Get away from me. Swirlies aren't serious. Joey, sit down. You're not going anywhere. See you later, creep. Slam. Joey slammed the door shut and came sprinting out of Mr. McDonald's office like a thief after the bank alarm had been triggered. Joey, blared Mr. McDonald. Walking out of his office, Mr. McDonald gave a huge sigh and stared down the hall at Joey running away. I still wonder what Joey really did to get in this much trouble. What did he really do to that punk sixth grader? And so looking right here, this is their example. And even though we know what he did to that punk sixth grader, we wonder what else did he really do to get himself sent away? So it's got a, a, an interesting ending. But what we really want to focus in on is the conversation. It goes back and forth. Every time a new speaker talks, it goes to a new line and indents. There are quotation marks going around the words that are coming out of their mouths, and it sounds like their character. So when you do yours, make sure that you have that conversation going. Also, you've got to talk at least 10 times. So each person talks five times. So take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. We can clearly see 10 exchanges of dialogue. 
You've got to have 10 exchanges of dialogue in your writing piece. And keep in mind that your exchanges of dialogue shouldn't be, hey, what you doing? Nothing. What you doing? You got to keep it interesting. Keep your reader engaged. Have your character's voices coming through. All right. So today's goal is to come up with what you're going to write about and get started writing it. All right. On Monday, you're going to have more time to write, edit, revise, and get it all done. All right. So today, get started on it and get going.